Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Wednesday, October 18th, 926 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Tonight we're going to be talking about natural climate variability, which is what this channel is all about. Solar forcing and cycles of climate through time. This paper is from Scafetta, Mirandola, and Bianchini, and it's pretty recent. Some of the best stuff we can be looking at with regards to the information we need. I'm going to read the abstract. During the whole history of the planet, astronomical factors, orbital and solar variability, have determined the energy balance of the Earth and generated natural climate oscillations affecting the life of plants, animals, and human beings at all time scales. During the last decades, Severe concerns have been raised about whether human activities could have been so influential as to deeply modify the natural variability of the global climate, and in particular, could have caused a significant warming since the beginning of the 20th century. To properly address the latter issue, it is required to understand the phenomenology the phenomenology of the natural climate fluctuations. These are well emphasized by several climate indexes, such as the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillations, the Pacific decadal oscillations, the El Nino southern oscillation, and others. This complete natural dynamic is still not reproduced by the general circulation models, supporting the anthropogenic global warming theory, which is which is mainly advocated by the IPCC. So now therein lies the whole problem. The IPCC pushes the general circulation model, which doesn't include the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, Pacific decadal oscillation, El Nino, Southern oscillation, and others. And that's why all their predictions are horrendous. And there's huge discrepancies for decades, 30 years, and they're just coming to this. The severe discrepancy between observations and modeled predictions found during the 1922-41 and 2020-16 periods further confirms, according to the criteria posted for the AGWT advocates themselves, that the current climate models have significantly exaggerated the anthropogenic greenhouse warming effect. Let me repeat. The current climate models have significantly exaggerated the anthropogenic greenhouse warming effect. Yes, they have. Now, there has been evidence for solar forcing for around for decades. And I just went back to 2005 and there's evidence for solar forcing of sea surface temperature on the northern Atlantic shelf. Solar forcing of North Atlantic surface temperature and salinity over the past millennium by Sanchez in 2013. Solar forcing of winter climate variability in the northern hemisphere here. Innocent, scaife, night, manners. This is a 2011 paper. Now, what you're looking at is Ben Davidson's paper. From Suspicious Observer. Now, what they did is this, this, this statistical analysis of the Munson Sea low pressure as it relates to solar forcing. Now, here's the raw data here. And here's the solar forcing. Here is the grid, the statistical analysis grid. And here's the result. Now, this isn't new. There are tons of articles and scholarly articles on solar forcing as it relates to temperature. What you're looking at here is solar variability in red and temperature in blue. That's quite a nice correlation. I'm sure you've all seen this graph. Judith Curry uses this, where this is the temperature anomaly from 1880 to present in solar activity. You can clearly see the correlation. And the Davidson paper is epic. I mean, it's spot on. So 
So what is what are we talking about here? We're talking about the shrinking CO2 climate sensitivity in the mainstream. So what's happening in the mainstream is the anthropogenic global warming scientists are realizing how stupid their modeling has been for decades, how incorrect it's been for decades. And they, they're looking like fools. So as a result, they're changing the inputs in their climate models. And here's the result. CO2 climate sensitivity estimates are declining. From 2000 to 2015, this is the effect of CO2 on the climate. Beep, boop, beep. Uh, in 2020, it'll be at zero, and you know why? Because we'll be freezing our asses off in the grand solar minimum, and everyone will be starving. It'll be too late then. But you can see consensus science is coming around and it sounds like their heads just popped out of their ass here. We are closing in. This is called critical mass, folks. And this is a wonderful thing. Compilation of published transient climate response and equilibrium climate sensitivity values and atmospheric CO2 doubling. A recently highlighted paper published by atmospheric scientist Scafetta. We just looked at his paper when we started talking. This is the Scafetta paper. I'll leave you links to all this, natural climate variability. Featured a graph documenting post-2000 trends in the published estimates of Earth's climate sensitivity to a doubling of CO2 concentrations from 280 to 560. The trajectory for the published estimates of transient climate response, the TCR, this is CO2, is burning us all up, we're going to die, and sea levels are rising. The average temperature response centered around the time of CO2 doubling and equilibrium ECS's temperature response are shown to be declining from an average of 3C earlier in the century to below 2C and edging towards 1C. And you remember the paper that just came out last month that said, oh, we overestimated it by 50%. We're sorry. We were half off. It took them 30 years to realize they were half off. And now they're closing in on 100% off. Because they're total idiots. This information has been in front of them since we did the GISP 2s, the Greenland ice cores. And hundreds of scientists have corroborated the information based on tree rings, galactic cosmic rays, beryllium, oxygen isotopes, and many other methods. The truth is obvious. And mainstream science knows it, and they're coming into the reality. And here are the facts. This is the effect of CO2 on climate change approaching zero. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so now. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment box and be safe.